say, yes? I roll my eyes, wishing I had something to throw at them. Ever since Poppy and TK worked things out, I've been their single lady project. I need to find them a distraction. Welcome to hers, I call out when the front door opens, letting a rush of cold air into the room. Welcome to hers, I hear Tanya repeat after me from the hostess table. Would you like to sit at the bar or a table? The bar is perfect. I'm just waiting for someone. I hear the familiar voice that vaguely reminds me of nails on a chalkboard. My eyes shoot away from my girls sitting in front of me to Eloise Withington, looking her polished, flawless self in an emerald peacoat, a Breton shirt the Fug girls would love, skinny jeans in the perfect dark wash, and ankle boots that are so cute that even though they have a heel, I'd still wear them. You've got to be fucking kidding me, I say under my breath, but still loud enough that Vonnie's and Charlie's heads both snap back to see what I'm looking at. Oh, hell no, Charlie says. What the fuck is she doing here? Hey, girls, Eloise waves as she makes her way over to us, peeling off her coat as if she's walking a runway. Charlie and Vonnie both turn back to face the bar without acknowledging her. It's the kind of loyal, bitchy behavior I love them for. Her steps falter a little at the blatant disregard, but she powers on and takes the open seat next to Charlie. Hey, I plaster a fake smile across my face. Fancy seeing you here. Fancy seeing you here? What the fuck, Bryn? Are you a bartender in the wild, wild west? She glances at Charlie and Vonnie, who still aren't acknowledging her before smirking at me. Alarms blare in my head as I've seen this smirk multiple times during Lady Mustang's meetings right before someone says something that is liable to bring a person to tears. I know, I'm not really a bar girl. I like places that are a little more upscale, but Maxwell thought this would be a good place to meet up since it's where we met. A dreamy look drifts over her face. He's just so sweet. He even insisted that I sit in his seats at the game tonight. This garners Vonnie and Charlie's attention. And thank the Lord, because they distract her enough that she misses the just-been-punched look that is no doubt written all over my face. You do know you didn't pay for a date, right? Vonnie asks. It was charity, not prostitution. Of course, silly. Eloise pokes Vonnie's shoulder, gambling her life. The auction wasn't for me personally. I was just the mouthpiece for PWT. I'm sure you're great at that, Charlie says without looking at her. Anyways, Eloise's smile grows scary, and she turns her attention back to me. We got to talking at the event and just really hit it off, so here I am. So here she is, looking every bit the part of the athlete's girlfriend. A role, I remind myself, I never wanted. Anybody's girlfriend, actually, but definitely not an athlete's. Vonnie gave up being a lawyer. Marley moved to another state. Charlie had to switch schools to follow Sean. And I'm not willing to give up anything for a man, no matter how rich or hot he is. I'm so happy for you guys, I say so earnestly that all three women in front of me stare at me like I might be on drugs. You two make a really hot couple. Um, thanks, Eloise stutters. It's hard to keep your composure when you're ready for a fight that isn't going to happen. And with the comical timing that is my life, the door to hers opens again, and Maxwell steps inside, making me question my dedication to staying single. Hey, Max. Tanya raises up a fist and does the fist bump that's become the customary greeting between them both. Tantan. He says her nickname, and it's so sweet I almost forget he's here to take another woman on a date. Damn. The man is a fucking charmer. Ladies? He smiles when he reaches the bar, not even a little phased by the glare Vonnie is aiming at him. Nope, Vonnie says. I'm going to have words with you, but not here. She aims a pointed stare at Eloise, not in mixed company. His eyebrows knit in confusion, and he looks to me like I can help him out. I wasn't going to explain, but even if I was, I wouldn't have had enough time. Hey, great game today. Eloise jumps up and wraps her arms around Maxwell. You ready to go? I'm starving. She grabs her jacket from the back of the bar stool and puts it on. Yeah, sure, Maxwell says, still looking confused. Great. Eloise wraps her hand around his.